Hello, marketers. This is the Funnel Lab. Uh, welcome to Funnel Lab Fridays. Funnel Lab Fridays is a weekly LinkedIn live session where we're going to be diving into use cases and challenges for data savvy marketers. I'm your host, Eric Westerkamp, CEO of CloudMind. And joining me today is Misa, Misha Salkinder, the Director of Data Strategy, Customer Data Strategy here at CloudMind, and Doug Bell, our Chief Marketing Officer here at CloudMind. Today, Misha and Doug and I are going to be talking about measuring marketing ROI. Welcome, Doug and Misha. Um, Doug, maybe you could introduce us to the idea of the Funnel Lab Fridays, the Funnel Lab, and kind of why we're all here today. We have had so many conversations in the four walls of Caliber Mine about where the industry is going, um, and so many conversations about where we think it should go, and uh, really, you and I one day, Eric, realized that if we could get other people in on the conversation and make it public, we, we really felt like we could help sort of guide the direction of what we think is a really important piece of the MarTech stack and specifically how we take data and integrate that data and analyze data to make really good decisions. And given how much pressure marketing is under these days, especially in the SaaS industry, we, we thought, let's open that conversation up to the public. That's great, thanks. And Misha, uh, welcome. And uh, maybe you could give just a quick one minute background on yourself and uh, and a little bit about how you're seeing marketing marketers measuring ROI these days. Yeah, thank you. Excited to be here. Um, I spend a lot of time on the intersection of, of marketing and data. Um, our team does in general, and we get to work with a lot of amazing customers, um, many of whom try to solve the same question through slightly different lenses. Uh, which is why I'm excited about these conversations here. I think it's really important to bring this out in a public space where um, we can explore how different approaches there are um, and yet how we can find ways perhaps to find some commonalities and, um, and some common best practices uh, that we can all apply. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to dig into the RI conversation. Uh, Great, thanks. So um, maybe we'll kick this off, Doug. You and I have spent a lot of time going over, you know, our own marketing budget, and um, and you work with a number of organizations. Maybe you could just high level, uh, you know, as a sort of career CMO and leader in marketing. How is it that you look at evaluating the return on investment for marketing for different organizations, and how you look at like how you think about like measuring that return on investment? Yeah. Yeah. So, so something I should mention is um, uh, as much as I'm the CMO here for Caliber Mine, I'm also a fractional CMO. So I work with other clients um, and then just have been around for a long time, as you can see, tell by the white hair. Um, and so the, the, there's a long answer, but I'm going to give the shortest answer I can, which is um, ultimately what you're doing is you're trying to measure the impact of each channel as it applies to different roles across the funnel which is really in many ways what we're talking about here with, uh, with uh, Funnel App Fridays um, is sort of how do we right-size what we're doing for each stage of the funnel, if you will. And so then establishing ROI uh, quite often is about this combination of channels and how you optimize those channels to the point that you can consistently come back to somebody like Eric and be like, Eric, if we spend this much, we're going to get this much back in bookings or that's sort of that in between, we're gonna get this match much back in pipeline. And this has sort of been the holy grail, I think for marketers for a really long time. We expressed it as elasticity, which is a really wonky way of saying, what I spend hopefully will return this amount. And that's what we're looking for, right? That's that's the idea behind uh, everything that we do as an organization at Caliber Mind is how do we help organizations determine not only the, ch you know, like the channel level ROI, but what's the total mix and what does that come back to? And so my approach has always been recognizing the role of each channel and then how are you sort of optimizing channel towards that final goal, which is how do I spend and come back to something like Eric and be like, Eric, spend this much, you're going to get this much in return. Yeah, that's great. I, I know a lot of the, the genesis of this was, you know, we're sitting down and planning out 2024. Um, our board is asking, hey, what, what, you know, setting targets for the year. And then us trying to back into like, hey, if we want to um, hear our targets, um, and for us, it's those are revenue targets. And then to hit those revenue targets, how much money do we need to spend? Like, what do we need to do? How much do we need to spend in marketing? How much do we need to spend in sales? What are the activities? And what gives us the best chance of hitting, you know, those targets for the course of the year? And, and, and 
we're not a huge company, but you know the, the process that we go through is probably very similar for a lot of organizations, just at a slightly different scales, right? Um, Misha, real quick question, like you, you know, that's kind of what our process is. You're seeing it for companies that are, you know, anywhere from you know, you, you know, 40, 50 billion down to 40, 50 million. You know, what are you kind of seeing as organizations are kind of addressing the same issues, you know, in, in uh, you know, our customer base? Yeah, admittedly, many customers have never even tackled this kind of to what Doug alluded. This is a holy grail. And I think many customers are trying to to reach this point. Uh, for many others, it was a question of campaigns, perhaps one large campaign. We run a super large conference once a year, and we just want to make sure that we're getting good return from that conference. Um, and it's really a question of should we do that again and to what extent we should do that again. Um, I found it very uh, infrequent to work with organizations that have a very clear mapping of their channels. Well, let me take a step back. That have a clear enough even conversation between finance and marketing to even enable this in the first place. But assuming that's even in place, that have a clear enough um, understanding of their channels. They have you know these standardized, normalized data sets that would enable something like saying, this touch can be linked to a numerator of return and to a denominator of spend, right? Which is ultimately what we're trying to, to, to accomplish here. Um, so I think there are some organizations that are really uh, on the cutting edge and are, are asking at least these questions are on, clearly on this path. Um, but for many others, it's still a campaign question uh, and somewhat anecdotal. It's interesting. So how how are organizations accomplishing this today? I mean, so, you know, they've got budgets, right? And they're trying to match the budgets and figure out like, okay, you know, for this quarter, for this year, I've got to do X with this budget. And I got to hit these goals. Um, but then on this side, they've got some data and information coming in around what's working and what's not working. How are they matching that data up today? And then, and then when somebody like the CEO, you know, or the CFO comes in and says, Show me where you're spending the money and what I'm getting as a return. How are they answering those questions or what are you seeing right now? Mm. Yeah, I think an attribution lens has been a best foot forward for now. Um, as to what I've seen. Um, so it, it excludes a denominator, right? It really, there's been really, I think a separation of the costs which sit in one universe and then attribution. It really sat on two different teams and you get questions of, well, we see these com campaigns uh, return a lot there's unfortunately a lot of let's send more email type of behavior going on um, because it, it typically is a, you know, without thinking too deeply into this could be seen as a very low cost effort to get a lot of return, a lot of volume. Um, and of course, this entire um, uh, stream, this conversation is around how to ex avoid exactly that, right? How do we think about the costs that are appropriate for these channels that wouldn't typically have easy costs associated to them? Um, so, so yes, I, I think it's, uh, like I said, somewhat anecdotal, but also just focusing in, you know, if you know, the majority of your spend is in a huge conference, you spend tens of millions of dollars on it, then, um, then you want to make sure that you get the return there. Um, so I think the better companies use something like multi-touch attribution because they think of it in the context of a fuller buyer journey. Um, but, uh, you know, we've experienced instances where it's been, you know, what companies have we touched? What's been their revenue? And can we sum that up and compare it to the cost? Yeah. So just kind of sum that, what you're seeing is, you know, some companies are using attribution to really measure all their tactics, but they're really only taking slices of that information and applying it to specific cost centers to see like, well, how is this cost center? What is my return? I'm running a large event. It cost me, you know, $3 million to run what did I get out of it? And they do some, you know, analysis on there, or, you know, it's a little bit easier at the, at the digital level where you've got ads and, 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 and ad costs and spends, and, and those are flowing into a system and you can kind of measure that, but you're not seeing them really be able to kind of go holistically. Like, Hey, how does my digital comparing to my events, comparing to my out, you know, my sales outreach comparing to, you know, X, Y, and Z. Is that, is that kind of accurate? Yes, that's exactly it. Um, I've seen this interesting just earlier this week, a, a really interesting approach to um, to ROI, where whereby the it, it was they were using a funnel lens, and I thought it was really interesting uh, a way to measure. So they looked at 
kind of once you take multi-touch attribution and you have values, varying values for each touches, I say, well, what are the values in each stage of my marketing funnel? Which I thought was a fascinating approach to do this mm. because then you can say, you can all of a sudden group and compare certain campaign attribution within engagement levels of your prospects yeah. um, and customers. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I, I think you well described, I think the, the, the majority of organizations that, that I've seen, but there are some really interesting approaches that I'm seeing emerge. That's great. Um, kind of switching tactics a little bit, Doug. When um, uh, you've been you've been doing this for a while, you've been watching marketing organizations, you know, and you've been very involved in sort of SaaS based organizations and tech organizations. As you've been watching them evolve over time, and and you've been watching sort of best in class companies, and specifically you've been watching the changes between say 2022, 2023, and 2024, and the approach. Maybe how would you kind of categorize? where things are going, the shift in attitudes, and also the shift in how marketing is being, um, uh, I would say treated within organizations, but the role marketing is playing in trying to understand budgets kind of going forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, look, let's just acknowledge that there's a tremendous amount of pressure on marketing and that typically marketing is the first organization to experience some sort of pullback or cut when things are going poorly. And, and I think that is a reflection of a lack of understanding of the value of marketing broadly. And I think that's on marketers, honestly, to, 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 to take up the mantle, if you will. And I think this is a good example of a conversation that will help us understand at the end of the day, it's really on us. So the next cycle shouldn't be about cutting, right? So back to the original you know, uh, question or the idea here, what I've seen evolving pretty quickly is this idea of Marketing leaders are marketing abstracted from the end result of growth, especially in SaaS. That's almost completely gone. And to the degree that those people still existed, they probably are not around in leading organizations currently. And in terms of how that relates to progression and where things are likely to go, let's also acknowledge that you know, you've got this portion of SaaS where your tail cycles are rather small, uh, or, or sorry, short rather. And so let's say that your sales cycle is 30 days or less. Um, your ability to sort of get to the data and change what you're doing, you're able to act on it much more quickly compared to say if your uh, uh, sales cycle is nine months. So in many ways, what we're talking about here is, I think you're going to see the change start with those SaaS organizations. And I'm not talking about PLG, product-led growth. I'm talking about sales-led growth where it's 30 days or less. And the thing, Eric, you and I keep bumping into in our uh, weekly conversations is, you know, is media mix modeling starting to show up? And it is, right? And where is it showing up? It's showing up in those and the sort of those where those sales cycles are faster, and you mentioned earlier, Misha did too, where more and more of the buyer's journey is happening digitally. And, and I think that's where we're going to start seeing big change. And the first change I think we're going to see is not media mix modeling, believe it or not. I still think that's a little complex for B2B, but we'll figure it out. I think exactly what we're seeing here, which is you're going to see companies like ours uh, introducing the ability to measure ROI in line with their, their activity, meaning it's not going to be, oh, it's the end of the quarter. How do we do? Mm -hmm. Organizations are going to be looking at a dashboard going, is this investment working out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see that's, I think that's where it's going to go. And I think media mix model is going to show up. I really do think we're going to see that more and more. It's just not going to be as present for those with longer sales cycles. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think there's a, a, I think it's going to move from this really high level view of conversation only between a CMO and CFO. So actually campaign managers being able to measure, you know, more immediately, you know, how to, how to, even if we're focusing on an event, how is this event compared to the same amount of return I had for it at this time last year? Do we need to adjust some things? Um, it, it'll become a much more tactical tool, which I think is fantastic. I think marketers are looking for this. I think there's, there's thirst for being more connected to the CFO, right? Uh, Doug, to your earlier point, there's, it was a bit of a disconnect. Oh, it's happening there, and we're going to reevaluate it, you know, once a year. It it, it almost looks like a, um, you know, there's still many organizations where marketing is treated as a, kind of as an art as opposed to a scientific function. And I think that here, I think ROI is really helping to elevate that conversation. Yeah, that's actually a great segue. Um, so, you know, we've got sort of the last you know five or six minutes here, and what we're going to do here is what we call tool time. So every week we're going to try to showcase an actual use case, um, a 
tool that companies are using, something that they can use to kind of make better data-driven decisions. Uh, this week, because the entire panel is Cognind, we're going to be showcasing the ROI module. But this is actually a module where Doug and I have directly were using this just a few weeks ago as we're setting the budgets and evaluating budgets for the next quarter, right? We, we were looking at the conversion rates and numbers and data to say things like, you know, again, what's the split between marketing and sales? Um, how much do we need to put into the marketing side? And then, within, then after we figured out by channel, we then started looking at attribution and models to figure out what tactics we're actually going to use. But I'm just going to share real quick, a quick screen um, right here. So this is, you know, I've jumped into Caliber Mind and I'm showing um, our, we call it channel-based ROI module. And what this module does is it allows you to take, you, you know, Misha, you were talking about earlier, you know, taking the, the, you know, where's the denominator? Where's, how do I calculate the ROI? And what this does effectively is take attribution by channel and then starts to roll in your budgets. Now, the key to a tool and something like this is that you need to understand, you have to have your whole budget in here. This can't be just digital. I mean, we would have that under, you know, we show here as the campaign ROI tab, right? You'd be able to see that, but you need to be able to show, um, all the costs that marketing is responsible for, and potentially even sales, kind of rolled into the cost. And then you start to figure out, like, how does that break out over time by module? Maybe, Doug, you could take us through. We were looking at this, and uh, and you were looking at it when you were trying to figure out sort of your planning for the next quarters. Maybe what are some of the things that you that, that kind of popped out at you when you were able to kind of get this, you know, this sort of, um, you know, 50,000 view, view of what's going on? And maybe some changes and things that you made to your planning and tactics as you were going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's first of all, it, it, it's sort of mind blowing to be in an application that helps you do the things you were doing in, in spreadsheets before, right? So, I mean, that was the first like boom. Um, but the, the 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 starting point for me, and especially with our um, planning together, Eric, is always, hey, what is the history of our ability to produce? pipeline from a ratio standpoint. And, and part of the reason I love this uh, particular screen is that if you look on your upper right, you see the pipeline ROI. Now this includes a little bit of uh, data from Q1 here, but the, part, the pipeline ROI, that is, hey, for each dollar spent, Eric, how much pipeline can we get back? Mm -hmm. um, and having that view on 2023 data as we walked into 2024 planning, that was really the anchor for you and I, right? We were, you know, we were sort of playing with it. Like, is it four to one? Is it five to one? Like, mm -hmm. what, how, how do we understand, and this is getting now to the channel data, how do we understand which channels are likely to contribute in the coming year so that we can say that the ratio either improves or declines? And so as you're seeing on the top row here, organic search, right? And, and I think this is true for so many organizations. It is so, so important that your organic search as a channel is operating in a way because what it does is it lowers your overall ROI. The, the painful thing we all know, and anybody who went through the EAT update this fall with Google and you're shaking your fist at the sky knows that it's awfully hard to get um, sort of elasticity, in other words, to, to have a direct sort of spend SEO correlation. But you're looking at that, you're going, great, this is my anchor so I can understand what other maybe less efficient channels that are more elastic I can press into so as an example, we're seeing paid and paid social there. The other thing that popped out for you and I, Eric, uh, and this was such a helpful way to get there was last year, we sort of leaned away from events, which can be very expensive and sort of be hit or miss for organizations. And we're growing organization. We're growing incredibly fast, but every dime you spend, you really want to be careful of. We sat back with that data. We're like, we really should have been at more events last year. And so it helped us understand what the overall revenue sort of channel mix relationship was and then allowed you and I dig in and actually tinker and go okay which channels are elastic which aren't and then which channels would we lean into and our budgeting conversations were pretty straightforward because we had that core understanding going in because we had the same data we were sitting in front of yeah yeah and then, and then we were able to take that data uh elevate it to to be honest a board pitch and then bring that back up to the board of directors and say this is what we want to do this year and uh, and get their buy-in without too much trouble, primarily because we could show them the data. You know, when they started asking questions, what are we going to get if we do this? What are you leaning into? What are you coming, you know, what are you leaning away from? Um, it was not, a, it wasn't an anecdotal conversation. It was a database conversation. And to be honest, a lot of the questions that would normally come up and the probing and stuff like that just kind of went away. 
because the board's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the data. We've been exposed. You send this to them beforehand. They look at it. They have some questions and like, okay, I see what you're trying to do. I see why you're trying to do it. I see why you're trying to make that decision, right? They may want to, you know, poke around the edges of the decisions and, it, you know, do you, do you want to lean more towards sales or more toward marketing? But at the end of the day, you're all working from the same information, the same data. So unless that group has something, information or data that you don't have, which in this case they won't, you can all kind of get very quickly to a decision on how you want to move forward. And then it's really about, okay, how much growth do we want? How much do we want to spend? How much risk do we want to take? And that's more of the dialogue and the conversation at that level. Can I just, I want to add to this, Eric, that was a great, great budgeting process. One of the best I've been through, but now we get to do this again. And, and it's sort of, it's like, that's great for an annual budget, but what about every month? And what about every quarter? Yeah. Because ultimately you have this beautiful plan and invariably things go well and things go wrong. And then how are you sort of adjusting and tweaking? We have that in front of us now. And I think that's the real advantage. As much as I enjoyed that process and how easy it was, it's really about moving much more quickly as we go. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, I think we're kind of um, running um, close to time here. Um, so I think that's going to wrap it up for Funnel Lab Fridays. Thank you, Doug and Misha, for kicking off the show with me. Um, uh, I think we've got a plan next week where we're going to be talking about intent data and um, how intent data is really being used to cover for the challenges marketing is, marketers are starting to see right now, where things are becoming less and less visible, things are moving toward more and more of the buyer circle being digital, and the need to really understand when companies are in market that are interested in something you're using, but how do you operationalize it? How do you take that intent data when do you use it in your funnel? How do you use it in your funnel? And how do you weight it in a way that says, this means that somebody's really interested in talking to my organization or that we should start taking different actions? And so we'll be diving into that next week. Misha, Doug, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.